Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Memory Connections to CPU. To understand this topic, you must be aware about the memory address map. So first, I will discuss about the memory address map. Then with the help of an example, I will explain to you about memory connections to CPU. Let us begin. Just to take a review about RAM and ROM chips. In detail, I have discussed in the previous video. But here you can see first is the block diagram of RAM chip. The order of this RAM chip which is shown in this particular diagram, its capacity is what? 128 cross 8. It means the capacity of this memory is 128 words of 8 bit. 8 bits per word, right? And since it has 128 cross 8 means how many address lines it requires? 7 address lines it requires. 2 raised to the power 7 is 128. RAM is random access memory. Both read and write operations can be performed. Data can be write into the memory. Data can be taken out from the memory. So here you can see data bus is bidirectional. Two chip select line, chip select 1 and chip select 2. Chip select 1 is active high, chip select 2 is active low. Another is the block diagram of ROM chip. You can see 512 into 8. It means this ROM chip, it specify that it can store 512 words of 8 bits. 512 words means how many address lines it requires? 9. 2 raised to the power 9 that is equal to 512. Since it is the read only memory means data can only be read from the memory. That is why data bus is unidirectional means data can be taken out only. Again two chip select lines, chip select 1 and chip select 2, right? You can see over here, chip select 1 is active high, chip select 2 is active low. So this is just a brief about the RAM and ROM chips. Now let us talk about memory address map. What is this memory address map? Memory address map is actually a kind of table, right? Why it is required? What happens in the case of the computer system, there is a requirement, there is a work to be done by the designer of a computer system that that designer need to compute the amount of memory which is required for any particular application. And that particular memory means either RAM or ROM that must be assigned for that particular application. So this calculation needs to be done by the designer. And there is some interconnections in between the memory and the processor and that interconnection can only be established, can only be drawn when we have the knowledge of size of memory required. Even along with the size of memory, we must be aware about the type of memory, means RAM or ROM chips. Then only we can draw the interconnection. It means there is a requirement of memory address, means addressing of memory can be established. And that could be done with the help of a table. So memory addressing that specifies the memory address assigned for any particular chip. Means address start from 0 goes to 10. Address start from 0 goes up to 4. So what is the memory address map? This is a table which is known as a memory address map. And this table is actually a pictorial representation of assigned address space. This is a very important point. Assign address space for each chip in that particular system. If in a system you have 10 chips, so for each and every chip there will be assigned address space, right? Now let us discuss with the help of an example. Here in this example, we have taken 512 bytes RAM and 512 bytes ROM. Same size of RAM and ROM, right? And you are also aware that a larger memory can also be in implemented with the help of some smaller smaller memories so just to understand and to draw the memory address map for this microcomputer you are aware with 128 cross 8 size of like ram also so let us take four rams ram 1 2 3 and 4 all 
RAM is of 128 bytes. Is it means in total it would be of 512, and the ROM is of 512 bytes. So if you write the address in decimal, it starts from RAM one. It will start from 000. It will goes up to 127. Total 128 bytes. Then again. For RAM two, it will start from one twenty eight to two fifty five accordingly, right? So overall, this address starts from zero 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 and it goes up to one zero two three. Here you can see the memory address map for the microcomputer. In the first column, components have been listed out, whether it is a RAM or ROM, and in the next column, hexa address. This hexa address is nothing but you convert this decimal into the hexa, right? Since hexa Means that consists of total sixteen bits, so you have to convert it accordingly, and you have just written it just by converting this decimal address. Now you must understand how to draw this table. Means now we would like to discuss about the address bus. As you are aware that in the case of RAM, what is its size? One twenty eight, right? And ROM is of five hundred and twelve. So for RAM, seven address lines are required. For ROM, nine address lines are required. So it means here you can see for RAM one, two, three, four, you can see starts from zero to seven. You can see this, 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 and this. Seven address lines are going to be used. And for ROM, nine address lines starting from one to nine. Right, as you can see over here, you must remember the low order lines in the address bus. Select the byte within the chips. This is the low order. Now you can see this address bus number eight and nine. This is being used for the case of ROM, but it is not used in the case of RAM. So here you can see address bus line number eight and nine. This is used to select. One RAM among the four. If this is zero zero, RAM one will be selected. If this is zero one, RAM two will be selected. If this is one zero, RAM three. And in case of one one, RAM four will be selected. So eight and nine is going to be used for the selection of RAMs. And line number ten is used to select whether RAM is being used. For the operation, or ROM is going to be used for the operation. So, for selection in between RAM and ROM, line number ten is used. If input of this line number ten is zero, means RAM will be used. And out of this four RAM, one will be selected on the basis of the knowledge of bits on eight and nine. And if the input of this line bus line number ten is one, it means ROM will be used for the uh, function. Moving ahead, now let us discuss about the memory connections to the CPU. So to understand the memory connections, I have listed out same memory address map. You can see the decimal address over here. Means four RAMs and one ROM is going to be used. RAM, which is of the order of one twenty eight into eight, and you must remember seven address lines. ROM five hundred and twelve into eight here. Nine address lines are required. Now you can see how to draw it. You can see this particular diagram. It shows the memory connections to the CPU. Here, RAM and ROM chips are connected to the CPU to this particular CPU through the data and address bus. You can see there is a data bus, there is a address bus, and the low order lines in the address bus. Low order lines you can see starting from one to seven, eight, nine, right? So low order lines in the address bus it select the byte within the chips. You can see one to seven, eight, nine. These are connected within the chips, and the other lines in the address bus that selects a particular chip through its chip select input. Chip select input means chip select one and chip select two. So as you know that chip select one this is active high, and chip select two. Here bar is available means this is active low. Now let us see how to draw it. Here you can observe this one, two, three, and four RAMs are available. And in the case of the RAMs, you are aware that the data bus 
connected to rams can transfer the information in both direction means both read and write that is why you can see data versus bidirectional but in the case of the rom it has only output capability read only data can be read from the memory so that is why it is out and here you can see this assigns 0 to 511 511 this address to ram and 512 to 1023 to rom so address is being assigned over here now from this particular table you can see for ram whether it is 1 2 3 4 seven address lines are used so you can see 87 0 1 2 7 means here 1 2 7 address lines is being connected to all the rams but in the case of the rom you can see total nine address lines means 7 8 and 9 so you can see 89 means 1 to 9 address lines 1 to 7 then line number 8 and 9 and as you are aware that line number 8 and 9 this is used to select any one ram among this four so how to do this here you can see input to this line number 8 and 9 that is being applied to the decoder this decoder is of two cross four order right and the output you are getting b not d1 d2 d3 means there are four outputs so you can see output of this decoder is applied to the chip select one as i have told you right so if output means if input to this line number 8 and 9 is 0 0 then ram 1 will be selected if input is 0 1 then ram 2 will be selected input is 1 0 ram 3 and in the case of 1 1 ram 4 will be selected so that is the function of the decoder and you can see the output of decoder is directly connected to the chip select one line right of all the rams now you can see over here about the line number 10 see if line number 10 is 0 ram will be selected if line number let me explain it to you as you know that chip select 2 this is active loop right so now what is going to happen if the input to this line number 10 is 0 so 0 will be applied to this ram on this chip select 2 line which is active loop so here it is 0 it means ram will be selected but here it is 0 but at the output of this inverter output will be 1 1 will be applied to cs2 means chip select 2 line in the case of the rom but rom is active low so this will not work it means when input to this address line number 10 is 0 ram will be selected what happen in the case of the when input is 1 what happen when the input to this line number 10 is 1 1 will be available over here in all the cases right so when one is available cs2 is active low ram will not be active but here it is one and the output of this inverter you will be getting zero it means in this particular case rom will be selected so line number 10 is used for the selection of inputs a selection of whether ram is going to be selected or rom here you can see read and write lines so read and write outputs from the microprocessor they are applied to the each ram because ram has the input read and write but rom don't have any input of read and write so read and writes are directly connected to the ram and um, all the rams all the four rooms all all the four rams only and you can see out of 16 address buses address buses may be a uh, eight line 16 lines but here we are talking about the 16 only 10 lines are used remaining six are not used so 11 to 16 address lines they are not used in this particular case so this is how you can draw the connection for uh, in between the memory to the cpu so you must be aware that how to draw this particular connection how it is going to work so here i have taken the example and this example just show or it gives an indication of interconnection complexity you can see how complex it is means how complex the system is in between the memory chips and the cpu and if we add more and more chips we need to add many more chips which needs to be connected then more external decoders we required why we require more external decoders because to select 
um, uh, for the selection among the chips it means designer role is very very important so designer must establish a memory map that memory map assigns address to the various chips within the system for which the required connection is to be determined so this is how you can draw it and you can explain it you can take a note i have already discussed in detail thank you so much for watching this video